Hey guys, what's up? It's Sola, and today we're going to be having a look at the last of the generators, hopefully, maybe, depending on how quick we go. So uh, I've just started with the first tool here, which is um, the circle tool. So uh, the difference between a circle and masking something out or making a shape tool is you get this handy little menu here, which lets you set the feathering of the radius so you can create these kind of like cool uh, different versions and when I do this I usually then make it 3D and then you can um, oh I've made a, have I made a mask? No, this should be right oh, I've made a certain adjustment layer, apologies so yeah so you can make this uh, a kind of blast wave almost and uh, if you then like keyframe the scale going from like you know, zero to something ridiculously big and then maybe just like uh, fading out as you get to the end so you got uh, some, something like that going on it can be really useful to use as a kind of blast wave especially if you like duplicate it and then offset it a couple frames you can do that again and maybe make one of these like lighter uh, but you can get these kind of like pretty cool blast waves. Uh, so that's how I would use a circle tool. Circle tool is pretty neat. Uh, moving on, we have uh, the, the ellipse tool is kind of the same. The I've shown you fill before. Uh, eyedropper fill is kind of like fill, but you get to um, kind of pick a color. Fractal I don't really use, but I guess you could use it to generate patterns. Uh, the thing is the patterns all look very specific and this is all based off of math and to be honest I have never used this plugin once in a life in my life but you know you can I'm sure generate some neat stuff with it just by sliding these things around not much seems to be going on I can't say I've ever used this if I'm honest or have I ever met anyone that's used this? But you know, there must be some kind of use for it. If you, I mean, if you do this and throw a few mirrors on it, I'm sure it could look pretty cool. Uh, this one's pretty neat. Uh, and then you would just have to find the the right thing to animate for it to kind of move along. But uh, Fractal, again, it's not really one I use that much. So I'm not gonna go into that. Gradient ramp is pretty useful. Uh, so it literally does what it says on the tin. You got two knots left and right uh, they finally implemented this thing to swap the colors because originally you couldn't you can change it to a radial ramp which uh, is just basically a radial gradient uh, if we zoom in uh, the reason they have a scatter here is it kind of adds a bit of noise to the ramp because if if not uh, when you you'll start to get this thing called banding where you get a uh, kind of bands of colors and it's because there's not enough color information in between the the colors uh, you get this a lot when you're going from like two colors which are not drastically different to each other uh, so if I do like dark gray and turn the that off uh, let's try and get an example of it working uh, you can kind of see it there but basically uh, it just adds some noise to your ramp and uh, allows you to get rid of any banding if you've got any so a uh, good little tip there Grid is so useful, but there's some things you need to remember with grid. Uh, so the first thing is obviously you got the you got the anchor point here, and this will change like how your grid is set up. Or you can do that, or you can have like width and height sliders if this is easier for you to understand. Uh, and yeah, I mean it's it's pretty self-explanatory. You can invert it, so uh, you can make you know uh, blue grid and then invert it. And uh, if you come into the feathering and we come in on a full level here, you can kind of change the feathering so that maybe one is thinner than the other or both really thin and then one's kind of like thicker than the other. So uh, we've got this kind of like Tron grid, I guess, going on. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. One, th the, the main thing that I didn't understand when I was getting into After Effects though is if you try and mask this, right? you'll see mask doesn't work and for the life of me I could never figure out why this was and it's to, it's one of these effects that 
you just have to know this. You have to pre-compose it, move it into a pre-comp before you can do anything with a mask. So now if I try and mask it, fine. But if you try and mask it at the same time as the effect is on, um, the mask will not work. So I don't quite know why that is, but I thought I would point that out because it's one of those things that's just so frustrating. When you're getting into After Effects, you're like, am I doing something wrong? And the answer is you're not, but uh, <laughs> it's just one of those things you got to know. Lens flare adds a uh, very crude lens flare. I recommend getting optical flares, which is a plugin by Video Copilot, because this one only has three types of lens flares and they're all pretty limited. And uh, But if you don't have the money to get the plugin, I would suggest making it on a black solid, because then you can, uh, if you change the type of this to any of these in here in the screen, uh, you know, kind of category. Let me just grab a uh, picture for you to, to show you guys real quick. I'm just going to do this on my other monitor. So if I bring this in here and in it comes and we're going to oh, drop this down. So we got some pictures, some flowers I did yesterday and uh, yeah so it, the problem is if you do this on a solid any other color than black you're gonna end up tinting your picture when you change it to screen whereas if you change it to screen uh, you're just gonna have the option to almost make it on transparent and this is the same for any effect remember if you make it on a black solid you can always use the screen mods to get rid of the black and you'll just be left with this kind of uh, you know just just on white and then afterwards you can kind of like try tinting it but you've got to remember this is still on black at the moment so uh so this you know you can tint it a color but just just remember that you're still basically compositing it on a black solid so uh that's the useful way to use the uh i guess you would you would call it the the lens flare plugin so uh moving on generators uh, and we're going to get to some of my favorites now. We've got Radio Waves is probably one of my favorites because um, so oh, I've dropped the paint bucket on there somehow. So if we drop this on here, so we can see Radio Waves creates this kind of uh, almost hypnotic uh, pattern. And I'm going to change this background because it's going to get confusing otherwise. Uh, so we got this Sharingan looking pattern going on. And you can change the color, obviously. Uh, if you add reflection, when these things hit the side, they will start to kind of bounce in and create these super trippy shapes, which uh, can be fun, you know. Uh, you can change the fade in time, so how long they take to fade in. So uh, we've got uh, them taking longer to fade in and also fade out time, which is links to the lifespan. At the moment, this is just 10 seconds. So we've got it kind of, uh, fading on and fading out and you know you can create I mean that's pretty cool still as it happens and to create this kind of still would take forever you render qualities how sharp the the lines are if you push this way up uh, you've got uh, so there's there's three ways you can do this you can create this from the contours of an image now so that would be like the alpha information you can also create from a mask so if I create a mask in here and I don't know let's make a lightning lightning kind of bolt I guess uh, with a really dodgy end on it there right lightning bolt and if you come to here and change this to mask it should uh, I think we've got to change our mask to none maybe I have not used this one all oh, right you've got to select your mask maybe there you go. So you've got the, um, you can use a mask to create shapes. And the, the cool thing about this is if you change the shape of your mask as well, in this case, I'm just going to like spin it around. So if uh, you double click your mask and you like spin it around uh, and we increase the frequency of these to five, maybe you can create these really cool kind of kaleidoscopic uh, animations and you can keep keep spinning the thing around forever so if I keep spinning the mask around you'll see that kind of uh, results in um, 
this kind of crazy thing and you, again these parameters you've got to remember are all animated over time so if you change this from uh, maybe red to purple you're going to get that change over time as well and you're going to get these cool kind of blending uh, effects which are just incredibly cool and you can see here you're creating these kind of shapes which are absolutely wicked you can change the velocity at which these comes around which is just kind of like the diff distance it is from the mask got the orientation the shape so you can uh, just mess around with all these I mean if you're working from a mask a lot of these can be controlled by just moving the mask around uh, you can set the parameters over each frame which will this will basically um, not activate the thing that we were doing so we were animating over time if you change that to each frame it will just change over each frame so I like it at birth because then you get you can get these kind of uh, kaleidoscopic blending effects so uh, i think that's going to do it for today's generators guys thanks for watching and have fun with these because yes these are actually uh, pretty damn awesome if you get into them